Welcome, everyone, to yet another of the Lore Runners Weekly Podcasts, The Lore Week, where we'll be discussing all the news that's fit to lore. It's not a great slogan, but what do you want from me? I'm not good at slogan creation. <clears throat> Before we really jump into this, I want to say to Takoida, I do genuinely hope you figure out what the heck you're working on in Minecraft. Lord knows I know what it's like to be like, walk away from a game for a long period of time, and then you come back to it and it's like, what the heck was I doing? Why am I in the dwarf city? Who are the dwarves? What do they want me to do? Nobody's telling me anything. They're just saying, we like being dwarves. Tell me, uh, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Heck, I've had that with Pokemon. In fact, I uh, recently picked back uh, Black and White 2, and I'm in some city, and I'm like, what? Who, where am I? What was I just doing? Which direction was I going in? So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll pull up the map. There's three directions to go in. Which one did I come from? Do I get a choice between the other two? I, I don't know. It's horrible. Um, <clears throat> as ever, at the beginning here, I like to just kind of ramble about stuff so we can put up those timestamps that those of you watching this on YouTube will already be seeing up here. Uh, so I just thought I'd ramble for a bit. Let's see. Let's answer some questions on Tumblr. If Namine gave all her memories to Kairi, uh, like Roxas did to Sora, do you think she would collapse or she would stand tall? Hmm. By the way, hello to everyone. Zeiss, Myron, Sean, Sildeer, Darkrai, Luxia, Little Billy, uh, Takoida, and of course, Crazy Legs. What's up? <sighs> um... One other thing I wanted to mention here, uh, obviously yesterday I did a big old stream of Minecraft Story Mode, and if I had known at the time that there was going to be a, like, ep episode 1 through 4, episode 5 through 8 thing, I would have stopped at episode 4, so I actually kind of want to apologize about that, because I don't like splitting up the story like that, um, and I didn't really intend to do so, it just kind of happened. So that's why we're, we start off, stopped off in the middle of the story, because I was ignorant of the fact that that's how it was going to be done. Uh, otherwise, I would have chopped it off at four. But we will be continuing that once episode eight is out, and we'll do six, seven, and eight uh, whenever that comes out. Which is supposedly going to be in within the next couple of months. We'll see. I'll be watching it. Uh, man, I have a lot of questions here right now. Hey, Deacon. Hello, Bregwin. Hey, Grey Wolf. Hey, Mike Romano. I'm glad you're liking it, Myron. Um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about the Primus campaign, which is great. Uh, I put a lot of work into that campaign. Uh, I actually need to do some GMing today with regards to the forum campaign. Uh, since right now the humans are off trying to... Well, I'm actually not sure what their goal is, but they're currently on an airship... Uh, with a whole bunch of other humans, uh, refugees, and I'm going to describe to them how that's going on. And meanwhile, on the other side of things, uh, Zeiss and Coulson have just decided to reach out to the Tumorok, and I'm trying to decide what the best possible death is to give to them. Because I was I was debating, like, a good old, you know, quick and instantaneous, you know, rocks fall kind of a thing. But I was uh, at the other on the other side of things, it really makes more sense to me that they have this kind of slow, excruciating death of misery and suffering. So I'm really torn on that. Um... Uh, I am not, I'm nowhere near the 8th gym. In fact, I could probably pull up which gym I'm at right now. I could just see how many badges I have. <sighs> Where's my wipe? There we go. In all honesty, though, ignoring all jokes of hideous death, I, I want to handle the Tumorok situation very, very carefully. It's hard as a GM. I've actually been thinking about this a lot recently. It's hard as a GM... Why would the Tumorok even understand what a Pokemon is? It's hard as a GM to uh, balance challenge. Uh, because I've talked to all five of my... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All seven of my players, and all of them have said the same thing universally. If my character dies, I'm out. 
you know, I'm, I'm walking out of the campaign. And that's not really what I want, but if I'm not allowed to threaten and try to kill my players, I'm left with surprisingly few tools to um, challenge them, to threaten them, to actually make you guys uh, have some kind of, you know, danger. Because there does need to be some kind of danger, I feel. You know? And uh, so I've, I've actually spent a decent chunk of my recent time trying to debate how to in, how to endanger the party. Parties, I should say, plurally. Okay, I have three gym badges so far in black and white. Two. So, that's where I'm at. There we go. But I bring this up because, like, even if you read the initial, like, opening title crawl of Primus, one of the things mentioned in that title crawl is the Tumorok. And how horrifyingly dangerous they are, how they've completely changed modern society. They have had arguably one of the biggest impacts on my setting, the Tomb Rock. And so one of the players has finally decided to go to them. And the funny thing is the timing of it. Because I know what's been going on with the Tomb Rock. I know what the Tomb Rock have been doing this whole time. And I'll be blunt, if they had gone to the Tomb Rock about a month before now in game times, they would have just died. There would, there would be no rolls, there would be no deliberation. The Tomb Rock would kill them. The end. Um, now, now things are a little bit different. Things have changed for the Tomb Rock, and so now there's a possibility of something. But at the same time, I still want the, I don't want to, I don't want to do to the Tomb Rock what Voyager did to the Borg, you know? I want the Tomb Rock to still be this horrifying, threatening thing, because they are. They are, in many ways, one of the most dangerous groups in the entire setting. This is not a joke. Of the many, many groups, there's the guys you don't know about yet, the guys you don't know about yet, the... Uh, the Dominion, and the Tomb Rock. These four groups are by far the strongest groups in the entire setting. And all four of these would... If, they actually, if all four of these actually went to war, the world would probably be actually destroyed because of the severity of, of the power they could bring to bear on each other. <laughs> and so yeah, the Tomb Rocks... Ugh. Uh, I like that mechanic, Tixar. I don't use it personally, because I prefer to just do that on the fly. Um, but I've seen that mechanic used to good effect in the past. I I remember that, K, but I don't remember if I approved it or not. I'm sorry. Yes, they did, Vandalia. And the episode that's coming up for me, where is it? Hang on. Because I've, I've, so obviously I'm ahead of you on my recordings for Voyager. I actually just talked about the defanging of Voyager, or of the Borg on Voyager. And honestly, it's not really that bad, with a couple of noteworthy exceptions, until you get to the episode Unimatrix Zero, which is the season six ender. I know that's quite a ways in, but the problem is, the Borg, as of Unimatrix Zero, officially become a freaking joke and are completely defanged in every way, and then they stay that way for the rest of Voyager. And that's kind of the problem. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a social battle system. It's actually funny you said that. Um, I actually was debating rules for a social combat system. And when I say debating, I mean I actually invented... Uh, I actually invented an entire new sub mini game rule set for social combat. Uh, all of my players universally vetoed the idea they don't want to have social combat, so I ejected the idea. But anyways, I, first of all, hi nymph, and hi absurdity, and hi deacon, and hi anybody I haven't said hi to. Um, hi Vendali, I haven't said hi to you. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go ahead. We've talked enough. So first thing I want to talk about here. Let me get the timestamp here is Half-Life 3 is totally not confirmed. I actually do want to talk about this a little bit. I've talked about this before, here or there, but I really want to sit down and actually nail this topic down here. First of all, for those of you who don't know what I'm referring to, um, hang on, give me just a second, actually. I want to show you the picture. Give me just a moment. Uh, there it is. This will just take me a second. I want to show you what I'm talking about. I 
I've actually talked about this topic a lot. Uh, especially lately. It's come up several times recently. There it is. Okay, so this is what I'm referring to. Of course, you can't see anything. So this was up at Gamescom. This was up at Gamescom. This, this thing right here. Do you see this? Now, this is... This is not funny. You remember when, uh, you remember Square Enix was like, Final Fantasy VII on the PS4, and then it was just the, the, the port of the original Final Fantasy VII? That's not funny. That's not interesting. That's not engaging. That is, in fact, actively cruel. If you'll remember, I was genuinely upset about that, because it is just cruelty at that point. It is just playing with your, with your viewership, with your players, uh, and your player base. And that's not cool. I don't know how to read German. Uh, Redaktur die es damals Geispelt haben is what that says. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing that incredibly wrong. Um, see, now the significance here is that it says Half-Life colon three. In other words, the three t types of things relating to Half-Life. It was actually a thing... Uh, yeah, sure, Meatfist. It was actually a thing talking about uh, the creation of Half-Life and, and people who worked on it and stuff like that. But this is pure trolling, in the worst sense of the word. This this is pure cruelty. This is not funny. This is not a joke. This is not oh ha ha Half Life Three is confirmed. This is just this is like. There's not even that this is like. This is literally them going to the the players and saying you really want A, don't you? You've been telling me you want A for years, and they're like yeah, and then it's like yeah no you don't get A. Ha <laughs> ha, wasn't that funny? It reminds me of bullies. How many of you had to deal with bullies back in school? And I'll I'll raise my hand easily on that one. Yeah, let's get rid of this stupid image. Um, I uh, I had to deal with bullies back in school. I'm sure a lot of you guys did too. And the one constant about bullies is they seem to think that whatever they do is is good or funny or whatever. Yeah, I know, right, Nymph? Um, and that's just that's exactly what that is. That's like. How many times? I, I, I'll pick out a specific example. I'll pick out a specific example. Uh, when I was in fourth grade... <sighs> I know, Dark Grey, I know. I accidentally uh, dropped my milk, okay? I was like, oh, that sucks, and so I had to throw it away. And another kid who was an asshole came up and was like, hey, you know, I'm sorry about that, you want my milk? And I was like, well, yeah, that'd be great. And he said, tough! And he threw it in the trash as hard as he could and walked away laughing. That's what they just did with that Half-Life 3 thing. There's no benefit there. There's no marketing. There's no, like, haha light. I mean, I mean, okay. I, I explain this because some people I've talked to don't really get the difference between that and what me and Pax do. Pax insults me all the time. He makes fun of me constantly, and I make fun of him constantly. But the overall tone is that of friendship. Neither of us mean it at all. Pax has had my back more than once, and I'd like to think I have had his more than once. We are act we are friends, like real, actual friends, as opposed to just acquaintances or whatever. I'm not talking about the other kind of bullying because I don't want to get into talks about violence uh, on this particular stream, Deacon. I split a guy's eyelid once. I'm not proud of that. So yeah, it's just friendly banter. And, you know, friendly banter is, is such a completely different category as that. And I point this out, point this out because too often marketing departments of companies seem to think that friendly, that what they're doing, like the Half-Life 3 thing, like the FF7 thing, this is just the two most recent examples I could think of. Um, and they're pretty, uh, there, there are many examples of companies doing this kind of thing. They think they're being friendly bantering. They think they're just being like, oh, this is just a light joke between you and me, right? But that's not what they're doing. They're doing the milk example I gave earlier. Petty, pointless, and cruel. And that's why I used that example specifically. It's not particularly bad as far as bullying goes. But that's the point, isn't it? It's so pointless. Why do this? Why tease your audience like this? This is the opposite of actually creating um, uh, customer goodwill. I've actually talked about the idea of, of customer goodwill lately and how customer goodwill is basically a resource and you can consume 
goodwill in order to produce money, and that's usually detrimental and blah, blah, blah. And But you can also burn goodwill for no good reason, and that's exactly what this situation is. It's ridiculous. I've had that problem, Vandalia. I freely admit it. Uh, when I first moved away from California, uh, I had a lot of bullying issues in California because a lot of California schools are not good. I'm just going to say that as nicely as I can. Uh, so I was used to more literal physical violence and actual threats and actually having to physically defend myself. There's a reason I took Taekwondo. There's a reason I took Judo. Um, and then I moved to someplace else, uh, went to high school, left California entirely. And uh, I've actually told this story before. It's kind of funny because I had a couple of bullies approach me. And they were all threatening because I was a freshman, and they're like, hey, you're dumb. I don't even remember the actual insult they said anymore. They're just like, ah, oh, you're stupid. And I'm sitting there, and I'm already planning my defense, because that's normal for me. And they never actually said any, did anything. They're just like, hey, you're dumb. And I'm just like... They never did anything, is the point. I actually stopped having bullying problems the moment I left California. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but yeah, uh, it was kind of a shock to see that, that team of a thing. Anyways, moving on, moving on. So, yeah, um, I cannot begin to explain how incredibly dumb that Half-Life 3 thing was, and I, and I hope I have actually, uh, have described that appropriately. Let's talk about something in brief here. Um, there's been a few announcements of new games and new stuff, uh, notably the, uh, <sighs> Uh, there's a new, there's two new maps they're working on in Heart and Heroes of the Storm for Blizzard, and uh, Alarak is becoming a hero, and Alarak is being added as a co-op campaigner, which is awesome, actually. Uh, I've been really kind of in the mood to play co-op. Sadly, PAX has not, so we haven't actually played any. Um, 20 copies of Finding Nemo. Well, I had to find him, Narlux. Anyways, so, uh, I don't have much to share about that. It all looks good. It all looks awesome. Um... More John Delancey is always something I'm in favor of, because John Delancey. <laughs> but uh, I do have one thing to talk about, and that's the fact that I find it interesting that there's... I mean, there's a lot of pieces in play for there being a big Diablo announcement this year. And a lot of us were predicting there would be a big Diablo announcement at Gamescom, and there wasn't. And there has been no real reveal there. There's been a lot of rumors circling right now about a StarCraft HD. We don't even know what that means. We've, there's been a lot of rumors about, uh, you know, a Diablo 1 report or Diablo 2 report or something along those lines. And maybe the new Diab a new Diablo game or a Diablo expansion. But nothing has come of any of this. This is all just pure speculation and rumors. So... No idea what to make of that. Um, I do find it interesting, because Gamescom is traditionally... Some people are like, oh, they'll never announce anything at Gamescom. Uh, yeah, they they announced Legion at Gamescom, just to use a recent example. Uh, Blizzard has always had a fairly strong presence at Gamescom, and uh, so it would make sense for them to do a major announcement there. The fact that they didn't is itself kind of unusual. <sighs> um, if, if they remade Diablo 1 and 2 in the th in, like proper remake... In, like, the Diablo 3 engine, sold. If they remade StarCraft and Brood War in the StarCraft 2 engine, again, proper remake. You know, some new content to, to help flesh out some of the missions so we understand a little better what's going on, sold. I mean, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. If they remade Warcraft 1 or 2 or 3 in the StarCraft 2 engine, again, sold. Absolutely. Um... I'm trying to remember, did they... I don't think they really showed off anything else at Gamescom. I mean, there was the whole Charism thing, which I don't have much to talk about there. Uh, it looks awesome. The fact that it's a dungeon, a five-man, is amazing. Uh, this is something I've been pushing for for years. The idea of... And I talked about this a lot during the WoW lore run. The idea of... Um, rather than having ten be the minimum number for doing raids, have it be three is, as I think, the ideal number. Excuse me. And... Um, so I think that would be, uh, this is a good step in the right direction, being down to five people effectively doing a raid with the new cars and is awesome. And we just need to shove it down just two more steps, that's all we need to do, two more steps. Um, but at least this is the step in the right direction, I'm really excited about it, and I intend to play the hell out of cars when it comes out. Um, I haven't really done anything with the cars and Hearthstone thing, before you ask, I, in fact I haven't played it at all. I haven't really been into Hearthstone lately, I've been so busy with everything else, I don't really have time to play games uh, that are just for fun at the moment. <sighs> Um, cash shop shenanigans. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, real life auction house. Uh, let's see. Um, the uh, what else? I, I had there was something else that was announced at Gamescom. Oh shoot! I I didn't actually write it down because I thought I would remember it. Apparently, I didn't. Am am not. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, there was a Mafia Three thing. That's not it. I agree, Narlux. That would actually be kind of cool. And it would enable me to keep my Hearthstone in Pandaria. <laughs> uh, nothing. I swear there was something else that was announced. It, it, there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff that really jumped out at me, though, to be completely honest. Um, so I guess we'll cut it off there. We'll stop talking about that stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to talking about something else. <laughs> Ah, uh, what's the timestamp? Uh, we'll just we'll just put it here. Let's talk about the most horrifying thing ever. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Survive, whatever. Metal Gear Survive. <sighs> Metal. <sighs> you know, what would be a good idea. Let's take a beloved franchise. And try to do something so completely not related to the franchise that the addition of the name on top of it might as well be superfluous. What Does that sound like a good idea? This is kind of like making a game called Mario Brothers that is all about, like, a survival horror game set in a in a pipe maze. No, that's actually wrong. Let's let's undo that. A survival there's nothing related to Mario at all in it. So it's like a survival horror game set in the Wolfenstein setting. That's basically what's happening here with Metal Gear Survive. MGS. It I, <laughs> I, I, I I'm having difficulty properly enumerating how ridiculous this idea is on the face of it. I mean, for God's sakes, it's a bunch of people from the Metal Gear Solid setting that get yanked into another dimension where there happens to be zombies. <laughs> I don't even... I, I don't even know. I can't even... I, I can't even begin to explain how stupid that is. I, I don't even know where to start. Let's ignore the fact that this is probably one of the most generic games possible in this current market. What is one of the biggest types of games that's coming out all over the place? I'm not talking about AAA. I mean, just in terms of sheer number. What is one of the most common games that is coming out right now? Survival games. Even No Man's Sky, which just came out, is a survival game. That is actually what it is. This is a survival horror game with zombies. It's... Zombies are done to death and back. Like, it's gotten... To, I'm sure several people out there are... are having zombie fatigue at this point, because zombies are so done to the fact that they are basically a creative black hole, and, and a creative shorthand for, we don't have any more ideas. It's the survival game play, because, I mean, survival gameplay is, again, the big thing that everyone's making right now. And, of course, it has the Metal Gear tag on it, because that way you have name recognition. What? In all and total sincerity, I'm not sure at this exact point in time, I'm not actually sure you could come up with a more generic game than Metal Gear Survive. I'm really not sure you can. I, I could continued to dice this apart, but honestly, I really, really think it just sits on its own. I think it's just there and it's terrible. There it is. It's terrible. You could add voxel building. <laughs> no, we're kind of past that step in, in gaming. Survival building stuff usually doesn't involve that. It involves crafting. I'm going to laugh if Metal Gear Survive involves crafting, by the way. <laughs> crafting and zombies, that's like in every freaking game. <laughs> I'm 
Nice, Buzz Dogen. Oh my god. Wait, no, there's one other thing they could do to make it more generic. They could hype the hell out of it. And have this big campaign talking about how it's gonna give you eternal orgasms and 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 joy and 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 it will rain money down upon you forever as you're as you're going through it and <laughs> I I cannot I can't I can't I can't I I don't consider myself a very big Metal Gear fan. But I have enjoyed all four of the Metal Gear uh, Solid games, and Metal Gear Solid 3 is in my top 100 list. That being said, even without investment into the Metal Gear series, this is such a blatant, blatant attempt to cash in on a perceived amount of consumer trust. And I say perceived because I don't think at Kojima they have any idea whatsoever what consumer trust actually... or Kojima, did I just say Kojima? Konami. They have any idea whatsoever about what consumer trust is anymore. It's actually closer to like 200, Hello Mouse, but still. Whatever. Nothing else to add to that. It's dumb. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about something a little more serious for a second. I don't know how many of my viewers um, have watched Sci-Fi Debris. He's another uh, channel that does kind of... He, he's more intended to be a uh, humorous kind of thing than me. He's way funny than I am. Way more successful than I am as well. Uh, but he also has some issues. Um, for those of you who uh, know who he is, who, who may or may not be aware of this, he had some health issues recently. Uh, I don't feel bad sharing this because he himself has openly revealed this. It's it's something he has not been quiet about. Um, <clears throat> he, uh, they're not 100% sure what happened to him, uh, at least as of the last I checked, which was yesterday. Uh, he's He had a severe problem. It wasn't, uh, they, they do not believe it was a, a heart attack. But he does. He is having serious health problems. As someone who has had serious health problems while doing this show, uh, it's not like I don't sympathize. And the funny thing is, according to his doctor, it is primarily related to stress, and he has had to undergo some radioactive therapy uh, in order to irradiate his blood, and a few other things. You know, blah blah blah. Point being, I just wanted to wish him well, raise kind of awareness of the situation, and uh, you know, wish him the best, and hope things work out for him. <sighs> Uh, he has mentioned that he is very, very likely, and I agree with his reasoning on this, to reduce his workload as a result of this because of the fact that his job has now physically affected his health. He kind of has to. I mean, that's logical, right? Um, I worry for him because, well, let's just say that you, you kind of need a job to keep functioning when you have a wife and kids, and uh, I am actually fortunate uh, in that I do not have a wife and children to also be supporting. I just have to take care of myself. If I had to pull back on my workload, my income would almost assuredly be going down as a result of that. And indeed, his income probably will be going down as a result of this. And that sucks because he needs that money. Um, so I just got to kind of uh, raise awareness of this. I also wanted to talk about one other thing uh, really quick regarding this. For some reason, I've noticed a lot of people seem to joke about workplace stress and how... When I say joke about that, what I mean is some people don't seem to realize the significance of what stress can do to the body. Uh, stress, as I say, and, and, and never mind psychologically, I'm just completely ignoring that. What stress can do to you physiologically and psychologically is actually quite severe and can cause very, very serious long-term problems that, as of right now, do not actually have a solution. You're just stuck with problem A or problem B uh, with regards to stress and the things that it can cause in you. And I mention this, I, I, and I try to, to, to raise awareness, for lack of a better term, about how horrible of a thing stress actually is. It's one thing I've actually uh, championed pretty much my whole life. You know, for example, uh, let me give you an argument that may sound familiar. Person A is like, how are you doing? And person B is like, oh, you know, I've got all these health and stress issues, but it's okay because, you know, at least I still have a job. At least I, uh, you know, I don't have to deal with anything really bad in my life. And then person A, which is me in this case, is like, no, dude, you, you need to look for another job. If you're actually at that point where you're being affected by that level of stress, you need to be dealing with that. And person B is like, no, it's not a big issue. Yes, it is. You know, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
Yeah, stress is bad, okay? <laughs> stress is bad. Seriously. At least I have my health. Yeah, how many of you heard that argument? So, like I said, I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about this. Uh, it's also funny to me because one of the things I hear most often is uh, someone who is in a position will say, you know, I'm stressed. And other people will say, oh, suck it up, you baby. Or, oh, I wish I had your problems. Or, oh, what do you have to be stressed about? How many times have you heard that one? Because I've heard that one. <sighs> Moving on. Um... I have two more things to talk about here. Kind of a slow work, uh, work week for news. Yeah, the same exact thing is applied to depression. I've heard that one too. I have actually, uh, I do not have a severe case of chemical depression, thank God. Uh, but I am susceptible to actual chemical depression, and it sucks. And it's funny how, I mean, how little people understand what that means. <laughs> So, uh, let's talk about something weird. Uh, I received a question recently, and I meant to bring it up in advance, and I kind of didn't because I'm terrible. <sighs> Give me just a moment. I received a question uh, semi-recently. You're going to have to... Give me just a second to pull this up. It was about WoW. Don't worry, though. The, what I want to talk about is not actually about WoW, technically. I'm going to quote this word for word, okay? Do you think at some point, complaining about WoW's persistent Horde Alliance divine, divide is alike to complaining about bad fantasy science in Star Trek? Or being frustrated at the characters in Arrested Development that are personality deficient? Or screaming at Looney Tunes for not respecting the laws of physics? Okay, you, uh, you, you got the question there? Let me rephrase that question in case you missed it. My being upset about the uh, Horde Alliance divide is akin to, I'm going to quote this once again, word for word, screaming at Looney Tunes for not respecting the laws of physics. I'm sorry, Sonashi. I've been there before. Um, <laughs> Here's the problem. Let's talk both sides of this. Let's be fair about this. I do bash... It's one of my remixes. Uh, I do bash... The, uh, I do bash the Horde Alliance thing a lot. Uh, a lot. I will freely admit that. Um, I have probably, I have probably bashed it too much. Uh, I have actually kind of made kind of an internal point to not talk about it as much on the show. Uh, because of the fact that I talked about it constantly during the lore run. And, you know, I was trying to explain all the different ways you could work around it and all that fun stuff and blah, blah, blah. Um... But I do talk about it a lot, and so simple overexposure is probably the threat there, and, and, and the problem there, and there is something to be said about that. However... What? <laughs> no. No. No, you don't even begin to have a point there. The point that is being made, if you deconstruct the way he says it, is that the entire point of World of Warcraft is for the Horde and the Alliance to be at war. Because the entire point of Looney Tunes is to have the, the non-applied physics. The entire point of Arrested Development is to have the weird personality issues. And therefore, the entire point, by logical construction of his sentence, is for the Horde and the Alliance to be at war. And that's it. That's the whole... That's the primary key point of Warcraft. And therefore, by logical distinction and the way the questions were phrased, the statement being made here is that there is something wrong with me for not actually understanding or appreciating the fact 
that that is how it should be, and the problem is with me, not with the work. Because someone screaming at Looney Tunes, and this sentence makes this very, very clear. Screaming at Looney Tunes for not applying the laws of physics is very clearly, you're the problem, not Looney Tunes, right? I just wanted to address this directly, because one of the things that irritates me most, I mean, I have people who come on and say, you're stupid. Like, I, have, I get comments like that all the time. That's actually normal. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, what I hate is the more passive-aggressive comments that are carefully crafted to try and make you think there's something wrong with you, rather than trying to actually analyze or discuss or even try to enrich the situation in any way, shape, or form. For example, if this person came to me and said, it is my opinion that the, the, the World of Warcraft storyline is centered around the Horde Alliance conflict and their interactions with each other. That the way they bounce off of each other makes each stronger and it helps to, div, uh, to both divide and to bring forward the characterization. It helps to make the characters stronger in terms of literal strength. It's the only reason they've been able to stand against the Legion and the, and the Old Gods and all the other things. And I think it is integral and core to the storyline of the game. If they had said that, I would not have even had a, a blink of a problem at this. Because what that's doing is giving forth an opinion and opening it up to discussion. What this person instead did was said, you're stupid and you're wrong. And there's something wrong with you. They just said it in a passive-aggressive manner. In kind of a stealth insult sort of a way. And I hate that crap. So, for any future viewers who want to tell me that I'm wrong, please just say that. Please just come to me and actually openly admit, say, I don't agree with you, and then we can actually discuss it like civilized people, rather than trying to insult me. And I mean this in general, to be blunt. I mean this in general. I get this kind of thing all the time. I have most of my life. I actually had a girlfriend once who did this all the time. I hated it. I, it absolutely drove me crazy. Uh, we were only together for like six months because she would do this kind of passive-aggressive well, there's something wrong with you kind of an insult and god almighty that drives me nuts don't do that <laughs> be direct i mean hell dark Rai in chat just a bit ago uh had no problem challenging me on 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 two of the points i've brought up in this lore reek and i like that i like the fact or was it loric or deacon it, it, it i think it was dark Rai. i'm pretty sure it was dark Rai. shoot Either way, I prefer it when people come to me flat out and say, hey, here's another way I could see the situation. Here's another way I could see the point. Here's, you know, I disagree. Here's why. Uh, I'm not sure yet, Wolf Monster. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure if I'm going to be streaming Legion. Uh, I'm still kind of debating the mechanics. I do plan to stream Legion in general. I'm just not sure if I'm streaming Legion in general. Uh, or in specific, excuse me. My words are everywhere. Oh, I've not been sleeping well lately, forgive me. Um, so anyways, I just kind of wanted to make that point. Uh, next topic. Uh, I guess... <laughs> this is just something I'm going to mention. I'm not even going to put a thing here. Uh, where is it? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am a huge geek, that is true, Dark Uh I just want to talk about this really quick. For those of you who actually are... Uh... Oh yeah, Takoita disagrees with me all the time. It's great. Takoita and I have had great great discussions about this um uh pax had an idea recently about wow uh there's a a kind of an undercurrent plot thread going on right now in warcraft right now in the lead up to legion about the fact that there is no guardian and they're kind of thinking about setting up a guardian blah 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 and i was saying it's probably going to be the mage player character pax had another idea uh pax said why not make illidan the guardian and I like that idea so much I wrote it down just to mention it. Because if you think about it for a moment, who is better suited towards it right now? Who is someone who is capable of making hard choices, who is very experienced with magic in general, and high levels of magic in particular, and who is actually very competent and capable of fighting demons on a regular basis? Who is the only one who's delivered a permanent blow to the Legion? So, I just wanted to toss that idea out there because I like the idea. See? 
Shadow and I have actually had discussions. Like, I was playing Borderlands one time. I kid you not, I was playing Borderlands 2. And Shadow is like, I don't like Twilight Princess. And at first I thought he was joking, because he was talking about it as if it was the worst game ever. And usually when someone talks about a game as in as, as, if, it's, as if it's the worst game ever, they're, they're doing so facetiously. Uh, so I didn't take him seriously at first. And then, no, Malfurion couldn't handle it. <laughs> He's got a blind spot. Um, but, uh, but then I, but then I realized Shadow was actually serious, and then we actually discussed it, as opposed to him just bashing it, and we talked about it back and forth, and we totally disagreed. We ended the discussion disagreeing, but I saw his viewpoints, and I'd like to think Shadow saw mine. I, I can't speak for Shadow on that. Um, and it was interesting to see the different perspective there. Uh, anyways, moving on, moving on. Uh, last topic for the day. I do have a game to stream after Lore Week, by the way, for anybody curious. So, you ever get uh, introspective on something? Like, you start to think, do I have the right to blah, blah, blah? <laughs> and Destiny's the best game ever. You ever think that Destiny is the best game ever? Okay, serious question, though. Let's, let's drop pretenses and jokes for a moment. I need to eat. Um, how many of you get to the point where you think A right? You feel A. And then after you, you, you pass the, the moment, the heat of the moment, if you will, and you start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't think A. Or maybe I don't have the right to think A. And you start to question yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Elder. Uh, because, uh, let me give you a direct example, because something prompted this, okay? There's a game coming out soon that I've already bought. I bought it on Faith. I tend to do an exploration on it. It's called Paper Mario Sp uh, Color Splash. It's on the Wii U. It's the latest in the Paper Mario series. Now, Paper Mario 1... Well, let's rewind a bit. Super Mario RPG is an amazing game. It's in that top 100 list I just mentioned. Uh, Paper Mario, also in the top 100 list. Uh, Paper Mario 2 is in my top 30 list. It's, it's in my top games of all time. It, and and holy crap is an absolutely amazing game and uh, the Wii one Super Paper Mario was at least good I actually wouldn't call it in the top hundred but all of these games I would say have a, have a degree of excellence to them I also tend to lump lump in the Mario and Luigi series but I shouldn't and I'll talk about why as we're going through this then Paper Mario Sticker Star came out now I was personally upset at Sticker Star a lot actually uh, the reason why was because it wasn't a Paper Mario game. I have since gone and done a little more research on this. So what happened was there's a gentleman out there. Uh, his name I have just forgotten. Hang on. <laughs> uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. That's his freaking name. Um, Miyamoto. Let's see if I can find the exact quote. I should I should have written this down. Here it is. I think I found the quote right here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Found the quote. Uh, so Miyamoto is very anti-story in video games, and I think it's obvious that I disagree with that because I'm the lore runner. Um, I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm with you, Shadow. I'm with you. Uh, so... Uh, when they were working on Mario & Luigi 4, which was Dream Team, and they were working on Paper Mario Sticker Star. Now, there's two separate companies, let's make that clear. Uh, both of them work at the behest of Nintendo and have Nintendo people involved, but they are two completely different companies. Uh, and I'm trying to remember uh, the name of the two companies. I actually don't recall off the top of my head. But anyways, it's two completely separate developers, right? Uh, the developers of the Paper Mario series and the Mario & Luigi series... Uh, we're both told, it's fine, this is a direct quote, it's fine without a story, so do we really need one, and, as much as possible, complete it with only characters from the Super Mario world. So no new, so as little story as possible, or no story, and only use characters from, from, from existing, pre-existing Mario games. Now, the difference here is the developers who made Sticker Star said, 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they made Sticker Star. The developers of the Mario & Luigi series said, Screw off! And made Dream Team, which is a phenomenal game, by the way, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it to everyone in chat right now. This is why I say this, this distinction has to exist. Now, let me explain why I didn't like Sticker Star. It wasn't a Paper Mario game. At all. In fact, it wasn't a Mario RPG. At all. It was like a very mediocre, standard Mario game. I mean, Lord knows we've had plenty of standard Mario games in our years. But uh, this one was just very, very, very lackluster. Even if you take away the expectation of it to be an RPG and you just look at it as a Mario game, it's still lackluster. It's still not a good game. It's also not a bad game. But that's almost the problem, isn't it? If it was a bad game, it would be easier to just say, oh, whatever. But Sticker Star is not a bad game. It's just, eh. It's the Shades of Grey, uh, using the TNG reference of the Mario RPG series. Is... This is also relevant, though, because Miyamoto uh, used some very strange logic to justify this. Um, uh, I don't have the exact quote, forgive me, I'm not, I'm not going to go digging it up again. But basically he said he thinks it's okay for story to be in like a Zelda game, but he thinks there's no real purpose in story being in a Mario game. Uh, for those of you not aware, he has actually already done this before with a game called Mario Galaxy 2, which was actually supposed to have a fairly large in-depth story. And if you've played that game, it doesn't. It basically does not have a story. In fact, I would go so far as to say it doesn't have a story. It has an excuse. Um, so he says, you know, story does not belong... Yes, I will, Rosalia. Story does not belong in a Mario game. In order to try and justify this, they, Nintendo put out a uh, a survey. I actually pr pr uh, participated in this survey uh, some years ago. And I'm just going to quote here. Uh, with regards to the Super Paper Mario game, that's the Wii one, uh, not even 1% of the people said the story was interesting. More people said that the flip move for switching between 2D and 3D was fun. So we realized people don't play a, a Paper Mario game for the story. What is AM2R? Now, I cannot even begin to explain how much I disagree with this mentality and philosophy. I cannot, I cannot be more against this. This is like someone walking up to me and saying, Mr. Lore Runner, you're okay with killing babies, right? No! <laughs> like, that's like, that, that's just that level of automatic rejection. No! Of course not! What the hell? Um, oh, uh, I talked about that last week, and the answer is no, Tigzar. Uh, until the legal issues are settled, no. Uh, so, it's such an automatic, blatant no that I don't even know how to properly discuss this. Here's the weird thing. Here's where we get into some weird stuff. Do I have the right to be upset about Paper Mario Sticker Star? Do I have the right to look at a work and the developer wants to make B and I want them to make A and they make B, do I have the right to be upset about that? If they enjoy making something I don't like or want, if they want to make something completely separate than what I want, if it is their design and desire, if it is their intention to make another type of game than what I want, do I have the right to be upset about that? Do I have the right to complain about that? Do I have the right to bring that up at all? Now, there is another side to this, and that's the words Paper Mario, to use this exact uh, example. Because, and, and Little Billy points this out, the problem is they're calling it Paper Mario. And of course, and I'd actually just discussed this with regards to the Metal Gear thing, but, and, and this is a very, 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 very old problem, um, but it is extremely common for people to name something just so you have the name recognition, even though it has nothing to do with whatever the name is, right? Um, and then there's other sides to this, like, like as Boz Dogan just pointed out, if, if it is popular, if what the customer base wants is A, and you want to make B, then you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by refusing to make A, you know? And I just, I, I, this really got me thinking. 
is this something that I have the right to be upset about? Now, this was coming up because of Color Splash. Because Miyamoto has apparently also kind of smashed down some of the creativity heel uh, with regards to uh, Color Splash. And just from hearing that alone, I wish I, I'm not excited about the game anymore. You know, a new Paper Mario game is the kind of thing that should be like, yes, I am absolutely excited, I can't wait. Paper Mario is one of my favorite franchises in general. You know, the move from Mario into an RPG thing is absolutely amazing, in my opinion. And as I've already explained, several of the Mario RPGs of the Mario & Luigi and the Paper Mario franchise both are some of my favorite games of all time. So I should be excited about this, but I'm not because Miyamoto's involved. And Miyamoto doesn't want to make what I want. He wants to make what he wants to make. Now, I'm still, I've still already bought the game. I still want to go ahead and explore it. I still want to give it a chance. But, yeah, it, what Samurai says is, is also a, a very valid thing. I, it's not that I... As I mentioned, Sticker Star was not a bad game. That's the point I keep coming back to. It was lackluster, but it was not bad. It's not like they made Ride to Hell Retribution and called it Paper Mario to Hell Retribution, you know? Instead, they made a competent, if kind of lackluster, Mario game and then called it something it wasn't. There's another problem here, though. It is my genuine belief that Miyamoto and several of the people involved in the Paper Mario franchise don't realize that what a lot of viewers... And I, I can say this with strength. A lot of fans of the Paper Mario franchise are not a fan of the paper. We're a fan of the Mario RPG. That's what we want. That's what we enjoy. That's what we loved about Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario and Paper Mario 2 and the Mario & Luigi series, was the RPG part, not the paper part. And I feel like to them, this is pure speculation, but I have this, this strong suspicion that several people involved don't realize they're lying with their title because it's still a Paper Mario. He's still made of paper. Look, look. It's, it's, here, look, look, see? Look at Paper Mario. No! <laughs> and yeah, I, I see several people... I'm reading everything, like, everything, everything that everyone says here, and I'm, I'm getting where you're going with this. But it really made me wonder. It really made me wonder... Because what if one day, um, this is a bad example, I'm making this up, okay, what if one day I decided to stop doing ruminations? Because I really wanted to do, I don't know, uh, <laughs> creative puppetry, I don't know. And that's what I really wanted to do. Um, and people are like, looking at me weird, like, we don't want that, but I'm like, but this is what I'm really passionate about. This is what I really think it should be. You know, this is what I think it should go with, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I, 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 that's a bad example. Let's not go with that example. <laughs> Puppetry. Um, yeah, no kidding, Deacon. The Puppet Runner. <laughs> a knitting channel. I'm terrible at knitting. Uh, imagine a Doom game where you don't shoot demons. Yeah, I... Like I said, it's just a weird topic. I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with being upset or hurt about the situation. It's just I found myself questioning myself this week. It was literally just this last week because what they did was they released uh, a short video series. And there's going to be continuing shorts released uh, about Color Splash. And it's about a team of toads who are actually the ones who are the real heroes of Color Splash and how they are against Mario because Mario's stealing the sunshine. It's, it's, it's hilarious. You should watch it. Um, and I saw that, and I started to get actually excited for the game again. And so I started looking into Color Splash again, and I found all the things about Miyamoto being involved, and, uh, and then all my excitement ran out the window. Um, and I was just ranting at Pax. I was on Skype with Pax at the time, just ranting at him, like, God, why? And did, you know, all the, all the obvious stuff. You know, the RPG stuff, the paper stuff, everything I've just told you. And then after a bit, I pause and I think about it, and I'm like, do I have a right to be this upset? Do I actually have the right to be this upset about this? <laughs> Operation Bellhammer is still in progress, Vandalia. 
That could work, Deacon. But it would still be Doom, if done properly. What would not be Doom is imagine a Doom game where you're playing soccer. And that's basically what Sticker Star was. Because remember, Sticker Star had... I would argue none of the core elements of a Paper Mario. And I mean that sincerely. Now that's funny because it had both Paper and Mario involved, but I still would argue neither of those are the core elements of what makes a Paper Mario game. Witty dialogue, strong characterization, strong plot, uh, a serious story told in a non-serious fashion. You know, Paper Mario 2 is a great example of that. Paper Mario 2 looks like it's a, almost a joke game, and yet it has one of the most dark and serious stories of the entire series. All of these things are hallmarks of the, of the Mario RPGs. And then, of course, we get to Sticker Star, which has no characterization, no strong story focus, no plots, no story, no nothing. But it does have Mario, and it does have paper. A Doom sports game. Doom City Builder. <laughs> Uh, no, Dakota. No. And yes, Buzz Dogan. Doom League. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm excited for Mankind Divided or not. That's like this week, isn't it? See, here's the problem. I have so, so much work to do for the feature stuff that I haven't decided if I want to do a premiere stream. In fact, let's go ahead and make this a thing right now. I'm going to go ahead and chop off the local recording because I'm done talking. So goodbye, YouTube viewers. Forever.